Um, I thought I would just start with a, a little bit of a picture, if I could, about um, where are we now with respect to the banks and, and the SSM on an overall basis? Um, you know, the, the real picture is that, um, you know, we're, we're in a situation where we have um, quite a bit of resiliency in the system. Um, it's, it's the case that, you know, even after the pandemic, even after the war in the Ukraine, um, you know, e even after the rising interest rate environment that we are in at the moment, um, and even in the, the current situation of, of Israel and Hamas, um, we, we have an overall European banking system that it, it remains really resilient overall. Um, the banks under our supervision generally have comfortable capital and liquidity ratios. The average CET1 ratio of significant institutions stood at 15.7% in the second quarter of 2023. And the average um, stood at 158% on the LCR during the same time period. We're also in the situation where bank profitability has strengthened further, even markedly, with annualized return on equity of significant banks up at 10% now compared to 7.6% just a year ago. And this is, of course, due to primarily to the rising net interest rate margins that have compensated for somewhat slowing lending volumes in the overall picture. So from a financial stability point of view, this increases very much a welcome normalization reversing a decline that we've seen really over the last few years um, in a very low interest rate environment. I would say also that buttressing our view that the overall strength of the European banking system is, is, is there is the most recent stress test that we undertook. And this would be um, in terms of the economic shock that we applied the most um, severe stress test that we have conducted to date. The results showed that the banking system could withstand a severe economic downturn. And more precisely, the CET1 ratio of the banks included in the ratio would fall to 10.4% by 4.8 percentage points on average, if exposed to three years of a, of a very challenging macroeconomic stress situation. So that's buttressing our view that we're, as we talk today, in a situation where the European banking system is resilient, and that's due to a, a great deal of hard work by my predecessors and the bankers and policymakers overall. But at the same time, it's really not a moment for complacency. Banks need, in our view, to really remain vigilant. They need to be continuously monitoring and adapting the risk scenario in which they find themselves. They have to be open to being able to have a clear line of sight into vulnerabilities in the overall economy and to understanding that it's a fast moving macroeconomic environment that they're operating in. First is that monetary policy normalization has been faster and stronger than expected and that's posing challenges for the bankers. Households and firm savings decrease, market competition for funding might continue to increase and asset prices decrease in loan growth itself may be subdued. And these all have to be taken into account in the risk management scenarios that the institutions are undertaking. Um, the turmoil in March of 2023 illustrated the changing and the more volatile nature of depositor behavior. We saw for the first time social media playing a, a very important role in um, the movement of customer deposits. And so we're aware and uh, paying very close attention to digitalization and new trends in digitalization. And we expect that the banks are taking that on board in their risk management. So let me just spend a moment now about some of the details of the risks related to elevated interest rate environment. The increase of interest income via higher lending margins is in principle something that's very welcome, of course. Um, and improved profitability is something that we're seeing and it's particularly relevant because this enables the institutions to ensure that they have adequate um, capital headroom and that their distribution policies can remain stable. And this helps with the overall investing marketplace. But at the same time, the turmoil in the regional banks in the United States should really serve as, as something of a warning. While our institutions don't exhibit comparable vulnerabilities when it comes to interest rate risk, and we have looked carefully at this at the SSM, um, banks, with more concentrated and volatile liability structures or even weaker business um, business model profiles in general can also remain at risk. So 
We have enhanced our scrutiny on the uh, interest rate risks in the banking book. We're looking carefully at the credit spread risk arising from non-trading book activities, and we're regularly testing the sensitivity of banks' income and economic value of bank equity. And this is something we're very closely following. Um, this is also against a background that we think rise in lending margins are expected to remain temporary, and we're seeing some evidence of a softening in that area. And we're also looking carefully at um, the deposit structures of the institutions. Um, rates that are offered on term deposits have now been following up on the increases in the policy rates. And so we can expect that that's an area that's going to continue to put competition on the forefront for the institutions. So before I conclude, let me mention we're also keeping a very close eye on counterparty credit risk as an elevated area of concern for financial stability. And that's really given the growth in the non-bank financial institution market that we've seen worldwide, um, but also here in Europe. And that sector is playing an increasingly important role in the overall banking marketplace. And so uh, it, we have a lot less visibility into that area. There's a, an opacity uh, that we have. It's of course not regulated in the same manner as um, financial institutions. So it's in a growing area and a growing area of concern. And so bottom line about financial stability in an elevated interest rate risk environment, um, the, the banking sector remains resilient in the current environment of elevated interest rates, but we also note that there's weaker lending growth um, and we see rising funding costs and we see asset quality deterioration as areas that may pose downside risks to banks' profitability going forward. So I, I close with not a time to be complacent, but very um, um, pleased that we are in the picture of resiliency at the moment. Thank you very much. And apologies for that technical glitch at the beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. And I, I think you also have to go fairly quickly. Is that right? You can't stay yes, on the panel. That's true. <laughs> if I may ask you just for 30 seconds. Oh, no, I think you've gone. No? Can, uh, can you and still you hear me? Yeah, yes, okay. Yes, <laughs> my, my, my 30 second question really is a very broad one. Is the implication of what, you're, of what you're saying that a lot of lessons have been learned both by supervisors and by banks since 2007 to 9 and 10 crisis? Because that was pretty horrific for everybody. Yeah, there, um, you know, I think, well, first of all, I think that the lessons learned have been um, built into our regulatory framework and we're benefiting quite a bit from that. But I think the key for me is. Um, Let's not forget those lessons learned. It's important that we continue to follow through on delivery of the requirements, the Basel requirements. Those are still underway. There are components of the capital stack that we still have to implement. Um, and I think it's extremely important that we be cognizant of this current environment, which is rapidly changing. It's a fragile economic environment, and it means we can't stand still with respect to how we deliver our supervision and understand what the regulatory framework needs to be. So it's a constant work in progress, I think, is the lesson learned for me.